Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of my cybersecurity show. Today, we're going to be having some fun with hardware. Yeah, that's a good time. Been developing a series for uh, hardware hacking, like an intro into hardware hacking. I thought, you know, I'll throw some of this fun stuff. I'm not actually going to be teaching, but I, but I will definitely be showing you some of the cool things about hardware hacking today because I have found it to be immensely fun and enjoyable. Really surprised at how much I've enjoyed fiddling around with hardware stuff and all the cool stuff that you can actually do with that. Before we get too deep in the weeds on that, though, as we like to do, uh, remind you just to like, subscribe, share, and uh, you know, comment if you get so inclined. Something ruffles your feathers, or if you say, "Hey, you know, that was really cool." Let me write Daniel. That was really cool. I'll be like, "Thanks." It's really cool of you to say so. So now that that's out of the way, let's jump into some hardware hacking today. What I'm going to attempt to do is connect to the hardware on this board through this little. I don't know if you can see that, it's right there. It's a little white. I don't know, connector, right, that's on the board. Typically, there is not a white connector on the board, which is why when I when I got this from the good folks who donated it to me, uh, I was really happy to see that when I opened it up because it just saves me some time and effort with the, pulling out the soldering gun or, or doing some of the janky things that I do to connect to these boards. But I was like, you know, I, as soon as I got it in my hands, I'm like, come on. Come on, I got to open you. Show me what's inside. I got to do it now. I don't know why I turned into Schwarzenegger there, but, you know, that's kind of how I feel. That Come on, let's do it. Do it now. I'm here. I want to get in. So that's what I'm going to do. So I popped it open. I saw this little port. That little port is called a UART port, which is a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. UART, U-A-R-T, right? Receive and transmit. Uh, and it's a great way to for people to like connect to hardware for debugging, doing stuff with it, right? Kind of interacting with them. There's also JTAG and other couple of ways you can do this. But today, and really honestly, one of the best ways to start working in hardware is to find UART ports and learn to connect to them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to need a few things, though. Obviously, this is a necessary item. Uh, this lovely little device here will also be a necessary item. This is a serial to USB uh, device. You might also uh, need a ribbon. If it doesn't come with a ribbon cable or some of these connecting wires, you'll have to purchase those uh, separately as well. Another thing that we will also need just for making it all work and doing it right, it's, at least it's helpful in that, in that effort, is this thing. And it's super cheap. It's a multimeter. Multimeter, depending on where you're from. So you get one of these bad boys, and we should be able to do some diagnosing, or not diagnosing, but uh, investigation. Get rid of that little plate there. And uh, we should be able to figure out the right port, because I don't know if you can't see this, but guess what? New little fangled, new fangled thing we got going on here in the show. I got the close up, right? And right here, there's your UART port. I don't know if you can see it very well. There it goes. Yeah. You can just see those four pins, right? You see that? Little, little silvery things in the middle of all that white good little piece of plastic right there. Right? These four pins are how you connect to the board over UART. So cool stuff. But the problem is, is that unfortunately, it's not labeled, right? So we're going to have to figure out what goes where? Now, fortunately for us, this thing, and I'll show it to you here, right here, dun, 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 this is labeled. And I'll get it nice and close. And you can see there are voltages, right? We've got 1V8, 2V5, 3V3, and 5VO, right? Those are the voltages. And you can see I got the jumper on the 3.3 or the 3V3, right? So that's nice because that's what we want to do. It's got a few little LEDs on here, let you know when it's powered up or if, uh, let's see here, uh, that one right there is RXD. So that's a light to let you know when you're receiving data. And there's a TXD for sending data or transmitting data. There's also a one for power. You can see that one right in the middle by the chip, bang, right there. And then on this end, we have a few others. 
Let me see here if I can't get that a little closer for you. There you go. And you can see it's a little backwards. <laughs> Let's try that, Daniel. Make it to where people can read. You can see VCC, GND, TXD, RXD, RTS, and CTS, but you'll notice I only have three connected wires to this. And that's on the GND, which is the ground wire, the TXD, the transmit, and the RXD, which is the receive, right? So receive data, cool stuff. And I just connected my pins. They're a little, a little, a little off. Just make sure they're seated on there nice and well. That's all it is. And these are just single pin connecting wires. You can get these off of Amazon or I think these actually came with a kit of something that I bought, but pretty simple. They just kind of plug in. Uh, and then of course, there's this guy right here, this lovely beast, which is my multimeter. All right, so how do we do this? How do we make these connections? Well, the first thing we're gonna need to do is do some figuring. Because I need to know, you know, do I have something? I can actually use the test probe, I guess, will be a good pointer. Like, what pin is that? I don't know. What pin is that? I don't know either. How about that one? How about this one? I'm not sure. I want to know what each one of these pins do. I need to know what each one of these pins do. So the way I do that is the use of the multimeter. Okay? So... What we're going to do is, is I'm just going to kind of show this to you here real quick, is you need to have a ground, right? You need to know where the ground is so that you can share a common ground. And you can. we're going to measure the voltages that come off of each of these pins, except for the ground wire. It's the only one we don't need voltages for. And I'll show you how to find the ground. It's really simple. If you take your multimeter and you put it on this little setting right here, it should look something like that. It's a continuity test. Basically lets you know if you found a ground and or a completed circuit. So you just turn your dial like so, and you'll, you'll get this little readout, but that's not really, doesn't really matter because the cool thing about this is when you complete a circuit, right, it makes music. We like the music. So what I need to do is bring this over here. And I guess I can do this pretty easily right here. I'm going to take my black probe, my ground probe, and I'm going to find a ground on here. Easy way to find a ground. Look for like a solder pad, something that looks like a big blob of silver. And you'll notice that they're basically all around here is these little solder pads. Sometimes they look like little, like little squares, like a, like a dinner roll almost looking thing. You just take your black probe and you put it on there and hold it down. The next thing you do is you come over to your pins and you start touching. If you touch the right one, it will. And of course you got a good ground. I don't think I got a good ground. Let's try that. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, there it is. There it is. Right? So now we know that that first pin over here on this side, is our ground. So we don't need to know that one, but I do need to measure the voltage of the other three pins. And that way I'll, I'll know what's what. And there's a few tricks to kind of help you with that. What I need to do now, go to my back to my voltage meter here. I'm going to flip it over to, nope, too far there. And basically what I'm showing you here is this is voltage. This is direct current, I believe. And this is alternating current. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Correct me on my math on that one if I am, uh, and that's no big deal, not a big deal. But this is the one you want the line with the little three dots underneath it, and you put it on 20 because 2000 was it milliamps or oh, I'm sorry, uh, millivolts? I think it's millivolts, it's too low, right? I, I really I, the reading won't be useful, and 200 volts is way too much again. The reading really won't be useful, so you always try to find the right volts for what you're dealing with. I know that this board isn't any more than 12 volts in any given place, probably mostly five volts. And some of these are three, three. I know for the fact that, uh, that you are typically uses three, three. So I'm right in that wheelhouse. I should be able to get that reading right here and that'll be awesome. So I'll just kind of leave that here. 
so you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do, this is my plan of attack once I get the spaghetti all unstrapped. There we go. Is I'm going to take my test probes. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to put the power on so I can measure the voltage that goes through each one of those pins. I want to see what that voltage looks like. And the reading that I'm going to get from each one of those pins is going to help me to try to identify which pin is what. Because I'm looking for the, tra the transmit and the receive, the RX and the TX. The last pin will be the VCC. That's the power. I don't need power because the board is powered. So I don't need to supply it with power. I sure as heck don't need power going from the board into my USB to serial. I don't want to do that. That's a good way for it to go fry fry. You don't want that. So basically what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can even see that. I guess I can put, maybe push it over. I'm trying to make this useful. There you go. Maybe you can see me do this. Okay. So we'll move this over here just a bit. And then we will start doing this. Now, like I said, oh yeah, the power's on that side. Man, that's a bummer. Can you see it still? Ah, oh, you can still see it kind of. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna plug the power in and then I'm gonna put the black lead uh, on um, this thing. <laughs> it's all over the joint. So tangly, tangly. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna put the black lead on one of those silver pads, which is a ground. And then I'm gonna read each one of the, the pins, but I'm gonna do them one at a time. I'm gonna power up, read a pin, kind of watch it for a second. This is just so tangly. Uh, and see what it does, and then go from there, okay? So here we go, grabbing the power cable, plugging it in, finding a ground pad, and then going for the first pin we know that is not the ground pin, because we already know which one that is, that first one. So I'm seeing 330, 329, 330, 330, 329. Okay, pretty steady on that reading. I'm gonna take a mental note of that. Three, it does hit 3.3 volts, so that's good, but typically, you know, these things go to upwards. But there could be some things about that. I'm just gonna unplug it, plug it back in, do the exact same thing. Find a ground pin or a ground pad, should I say. Go for the third pin. It's really hard to find the top of that. You'll notice that one was at two, it's down to three, and then three, three, so now back to three, two, six, three, two, seven, three, 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 two, three, two, eight, three, two, nine. So you see, this one kind of fluctuates a bit. Right? So that's another mental note. It goes back down to three, two, one. Right? Three, one, five, three, oh. Right? So interesting. It's really fluctuating. Now it seems to have found a bit of a, a steady state. But when we were first booting it up, it was really going haywire. It was all, all over the joint, right? All right, one last time. Unplug, plug in, and find that ground pad, find that last pin. And we are on a, a steady 333. Steady, three, okay, down to 332, 333. But that's, that is pretty money, right? It's not really fluctuating, it's not, lower all right so let's let's talk about what we found all right so what we found is is our first pin is a ground wire we figured that out. it was really simple right you do the continuity test you're great second pin was three volts but it was a little bit lower than 3.33 or 3.32 remember it was like 3.29 or 3.30 and that's where it kind of hung out at so it was a little lower in voltage than the others that we saw right and the 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 next pin had a, had a really fluctuating voltage right it it went from 3.3 to 3.0 to 3.2 to 3.1 then back up to 3.3 and then back down to 3 right it was all over the map it's kind of moving around a little bit and then our last one was a very steady 3.33 or 3.32 only minorly fluctuating from that nice high voltage. That tells me a few things. A, that the first pin beside the ground, the one that's right next to the ground wire, is probably my receive because the voltage is a little bit lower. 
It, d it does have a raised voltage. Sometimes you will see the RX as a zero voltage or a much lower voltage, but sometimes the board will kind of like raise the voltage up for X, Y, or Z reasons. But the RX is typically a lower voltage than the rest, right? So there you go. It's not always, your mileage may vary, but that is a, uh, if I had to make an educated guess, this is exactly what I have to do, is I would say that that is my receive pin, my RX for the UART. All right, now moving on to that one that was like all over the map, fluctuating, fluctuating, fluctuating. Again, educated guess tells me that the voltage is, is all over the board because, well, um, data is being transferred. It is the transfer pin, right? Because sometimes it's a little bit of data, sometimes it's more data, sometimes it's way less data. So we're seeing that fine dips and valleys a lot. Educated guess yet again is going to be that that is my uh, RX. And of course, the last pin was a steady 3.3. Three. It was very steady with a minor fluctuation down to 3.32, but never went below that at all. Again, educated guess tells me that that is my VCC, my power. I think I have this thing figured out. Ground, RX, TX, in that order. Now, that said, I'm going to turn off my little multimeter so I don't waste the battery. Let me get that out of the way. Um, here's the thing is that when I connect to this thing with these wires, I got to kind of go like that. So if I'm connecting to the RX, I got to go to the TX of this. You got to remember it's a receive pin. It expects to be receiving information transmit pins expect to transmit information. So I'm going to be transmitting to the receiver and I'm going to be receiving to the transmitter. Does that make sense? No, <laughs> that's, that's weird. I'm going to be sending to the receiver and that's how that works. So the RX pin on this will come from, will connect to the TX on the board. The TX on this will connect to the RX on the board. Ground is ground. They just need to share a common ground. And there you go. Now let's get this thing connected. I will say this one thing. I did kind of mention that I was really happy when I saw that little plastic thing there. Let me show you a little bit of something here. Here's ours, right? A nice connector. Look at this one. Now this one is labeled. It does say UART. And there's a J tag next to it, but there's no pins there. That's why I said this saved me some time. With this one, I'm going to have to solder pins in to connect to it or do some other finagling but usually just soldering pins in is the easiest way to go. Trust me, it's the easiest way to go. So if you need some pins, buy some pins on Amazon and you'll be off to the races. But now it's connection time. So let's connect to this thing. So ultimately, I'm going, and just so you can re-reference this. Here it comes. Wait for it, as I always have it backwards. Sorry about that. There it comes. So I'm going black cable in the ground, yellow cable in the TX, red cable in the RX. So that means yellow cable will go into the RX, red cable will go into the TX, and black will be on the ground. So let's make this happen. So it'll be fun. Let's start with ground because it is the easiest to know because it is the first. Plus, this is expecting like a little Molex, which I don't have. So these things don't really like fitting on here very well. That's not my fault. Don't blame me. So I got to kind of find a nice way to do this. I love that I'm using my left hand like an idiot. I'm not left-handed. Come on. Let's see if I can. Here's what I need to do. I'm going to try to turn that. We're going to get it. Aha. Bing. And then red. Let's see if we can't get that sucker on there. Come on now. I just got to. There it goes. Awesome. Connection done. So beautiful. Always make sure all your pins are good. And now I'm going to do is plug this thing into my USB port. And we're kind of done with the hardware side of things with like fiddling with stuff. So I'm just going to plug this in. 
I have good lights. Everything looks good. All right, let's go to the computer now. Yes, we need the computer. So what we're gonna do is, first thing I need to do, I'm using Windows here, as you can see, this is just Windows 10, uh, but you can do this in um, uh, Linux, you can use Screen, Minicom, you need a terminal emulator. I'm using PuTTY here, you can use PuTTY in Linux as well, whatever you like, just you gotta know how to work with it, right? But for me, first thing I need to do here is look in the device manager, yeah, there we go, and see what COM port my little serial to USB thing got uh, picked up. It looks like we are on USB serial port COM5. Excellent, needed that little piece of information. So just look for ports and it'll say COM and LPT, and then make sure the drop down arrow shows and you can see what port your USB device picked up. Okay, then we pull up PuTTY and bada bing. Now, all you have to do is underneath connection type, click serial. And then you have this serial line area here and you have this speed right here. So uh, you, you're, you're gonna have to change these things. Once you click it to serial, change the COM obviously to COM5 or whatever COM port your device picked up. And then for the speed, I typically just start off with uh, 115200. That seems to be the most common. It's not always the case. Again, your mileage may vary. And uh, we'll talk about that a little more here in just a second. So I'm gonna do 115200. All right, now all I have to do is click open. This is a little box. And I know you're probably like going, that that putty box was super small, bro. I know, just uh, right click on the word putty uh, or anywhere in that area and click uh, change settings if you need to make this a little bit bigger. And then go to window appearance. And we're gonna change this from a 10 point to a 16 point bold and hit OK, and then hit Apply. A little bit better. All right, now I'm gonna power up the board. If everything goes well, we should start seeing some text roll across the screen. So, where'd it go? Uh, oh, reach down here, I dropped it on the floor. Um, plug that in, and waiting for it, computing. Oh, look at that, we've got some action here. Now this is all good, right? I'm seeing words that humans can read, which is always a great thing which means I've done everything correctly. I'm seeing what I should be seeing. Sometimes you might get a little gobbledygook, stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If that happens, if you get all these weird characters, there's probably a couple things that may have occurred, is that you've either got the RX and TX in the wrong spot, and you're going RX to RX and TX to TX, that, that ain't gonna work, right? Or uh, another thing that could have happened is the speed is off. These things need to be talking at the same speed. So if you have 115200 and you're getting a bunch of weird stuff, try a different speed, right? There's 9600 baud, there's uh, 384, something like that. There's a bunch of, you can just look up like serial speeds, like serial connection speeds, and just try them until you get human readable content. But we have good stuff, right? We are seeing human readable content. You'll notice it dropped us. It's done kind of with that output. And it says BusyBox V100, uh, 101, I'm sorry. And giving us a date and time. It was uh, running this built-in shell, Ash. Enter, help for a list of built-in commands. That might be useful. Uh, one thing I just like to do is hit enter. You'll notice I've got the little hash there, a little Octothorpe. We have been dropped into a root shell. Isn't this fun, right? This is why I've been kind of enamored with this. It's super fun. So, easy way to get root shell. We jumped onto this thing, cool little thing. I, I, you know, thanks to the guys at my church who were like, hey, yeah, take that stuff because I've had a good time with that. I'm always looking at different, I've got, like I said, I've got maybe five or six Wi-Fi routers just sitting there. I picked one up off of, uh, what was it, Craigslist for $5. Picked another one up off of eBay for $10. A couple of these were donated to me. Super easy to get your hands on these things so you can start playing with this stuff. And now, because I have a root shell, I can do an LS. Look at that, LS-AL. Now, your command capability is gonna be a bit varied in what you can and cannot do. So just keep that in mind. You also notice to get weird things like, this is in reverse order, <laughs> right? It goes from bin to dub 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 instead of dub 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 to bin. And just little weird idiosyncrasies of 
messing around with this stuff. But if I go into something like CD into the Etsy, I've got, uh, let me kind of move this up. Look at that. There's privekeyserver.pim. What's that, cat? Prive key server. Oh, yeah, there's an RSC private key that this is using. Probably for, who knows, maybe communication with update server or if it runs its web admin interface on 443. This could be the certificate that it uses for that stuff. Maybe SSH. Who knows what it's using this for? But there it is. What else do we get? What's other fun stuff here? I've got, oh, the shadow file, right? That's always fun. Right there. Uh, so a cat shadow. Ooh, look at that. Gotta love having a little bit of uh, a shadow file. And I can run that through Hashcat or John the Ripper or whatever. See if I can figure out what that password is. Um, oh, there was one thing that I, I was fiddling around with this, obviously, before, you know, just getting set up. And I found this command. I was, I was in SBIN. And in here, I saw this NVRAM command. Oh, what was that? So, you know, like you do, I run it and see what it does. NVRAM. And look at that usage. Get, set, unset, commit, restore. Oh man, are you telling me I can set things in the NVRAM? I can get things in the NVRAM? I can show things? Ooh, I like, because there's always fun stuff in NVRAM. So if I NVRAM, sorry about that. Let me get the cursor out of the way. NVRAM show, what does it do? Oh yeah, bunch of stuff goes flittling by. One thing I always like to do is start like grepping out for interesting stuff. So I did something, I think I did um, NVRAM show pipe grep for user. And I see right here, username, Grace, right? And that's HTTP username. So I wonder, if that's the username for the web admin console. Hmm, could it be? And then of course I did the exact same thing with uh, password. And there's HTTP password, open 2255. I'm not giving away anything. This has obviously been like long decommissioned. None of our, I, I know for a fact that none of our passwords are open 2255. So, and the only thing this thing did was give the sanctuary Wi-Fi access for people so they could, you know, surf and, and get emails and things. Uh, so, but I was successfully able to log into that router doing that. If I do an IF config, what's the, what is the IP of this thing? Right. Always good stuff to do. What is the IP Ryan? looks like it's 127001. Did I connect to it earlier? I think I did, but I didn't. Let me, let me just connect to this, connect. We'll see if we can log in using that, right? What was it, uh, 2255 open? I don't remember, we'll, I always like to run these things down. Remember it was Grace, open 2255. So if I've connected, which it looks like I have, I bring open a browser and I go 172.0.0.0, nope. Dot one. Yeah, there's the web admin interface. I put in Grace. Hi. <laughs> Grace and 2255 open. Or was it the other way around? I think you got to press login. Probably helps. We'll try it the other way around. Grace, because I can't. Obviously, <laughs> this password is far beyond me. Uh, open 2255. And then log in. Hey, look at that. I logged in. <laughs> so I was able to pilfer some secrets out of this lovely little device. Thanks to all my homies at church for hooking me up with this little router because it was a lot of fun. Easy to connect to. Mm, that's what you like to see, right? So there you go. I can mess with that. To get out of this thing, you just, just turn the power off, pull the plug out, and you're done. You can just close this like that anytime you like. And hit OK. Close the session. Bada bang, bada boom, hardware hacking, super fun. Like I said, I've been working on a series on this, so I'm, I'm looking really forward to uh, getting into that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. 
Hopefully you went, you know what? Hardware might be where it's at. Maybe I'll go buy a router and I'll fiddle around with it or an IP camera or something, some IoT device, and I'll have a good time. So I hope you do. Hopefully that was helpful, at least giving you some, some quick pointers uh, to the first things you would need. Some of the devices I think I've spent in total on everything you saw here. I mean, the, the Wi-Fi router was was donated, but if I had to buy it, it would probably be $10, $20. So we'll cut the middle and say 15. The USB to serial connector was like 13, 14 dollars. So we're right around 30 bucks. The multimeter was like ten dollars, I think. So we're right around forty dollars, maybe so forty to fifty bucks. And you could too be having a good time hacking hardware. Well, there you go, ladies and gents. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm uh, hope I got some more good stuff on the horizon. Definitely some uh, new hacking certs and stuff that are out there. A lot of fun stuff I need to get into, but I don't have time to do it now. So until next time, everyone, keep hacking.